Tim Pool is a Russian agent, allegedly. And boy, oh boy, is this wild. Is this part of the Rogan Sphere collapsing? It seems to be that the Rogan Sphere is collapsing in every direction. We know that Tim Pool was Rogan's trusted news source. How many times was Tim Pool on the Rogan, uh, the Rogan podcast? It's crazy. The Rogan Sphere is falling in all different directions. But first, let's just uh, check up on this story. Now, this is the majority port with report with Sam Sater. Tim Pool's Russian asset drama explained. Uh, Sam Sater isn't there. I know people, I'm not political. I don't really like these political pundits, but his his support team or in that uh, lady that's pretty cool uh, do a very good job of going through the document. So I want you to see that. And then we're going to go over to Tim Pool himself and watch him try and act like he ain't a part of this. It's crazy. Here we go. People may not know what the hell is going on, but here's a primer about the news that broke yeah. yesterday. So the Justice Department released an indictment. Two Russian nationals were named in this indictment. And it says that right-wing commentators, and they are referred to by as commentator one, two, three, et cetera, but it's been a people have been easily able to discern who is who based on how many subscribers it's based said. on their subscribers right so this is i mean the indictment here uh you can see is is laid out where uh you two russian uh nationals apparently according to the to the doj uh were responsible for an a an operation an influence operation where they laundered money through a company called Tenet, which is based in Tennessee, and spent nearly $10 million on efforts to influence public opinion by paying right-wing commentators to basically blame Ukraine and not Russia for Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. And the people who are named in this are not named, but it's you can easily discern it and media outlets have are uh, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin. Just to name two Benny independent Johnson. here. Benny Johnson. Uh, yeah. Founder one and founder two also work together to deceive two U.S. online commentators, commentator one and commentator two, who respectively have, uh, and this is where it gets specific, have over 2.4 million and 1.3 million YouTube subscribers. And right. I'm not sure which is which respective. I think Ruben may be 1.3 and Tim Pool 2.4. No, I think Ruben the, is if, one it's and the opposite. Tim Pool's two. It's the opposite. Oh, it's the opposite. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, gotcha. if, you read, if you read more... It becomes very clear who each person is when you get down to who did what and what the deal was and what the terms are. I, I could tell you who every single person is. I figured it out. Right. Commentator yeah. one is Ruben. Commentator two is Tim Poole. Commentator three is Benny Johnson. Commentator four is Lauren Southern. Commentator five is uh, Matthew Christensen or that Taylor guy. And then commentator six is whoever. There's two who are basically nobodies in our world uh, who are like smaller right wing creators and their commentator five and six they don't really matter much other than the fact that they seem to be the ones who made the uh two russian nationals the most happy in terms well, of uh happily sharing stuff <laughs> uh more susceptible honestly to this flood of money because yeah. this is just crazy let's pull up this this twitter thread put together by this writer ari Kovler. Kovler. this is pretty crazy um i i don't know i don't really follow the politics too much uh, but I would say that this is going to be pretty damning for the Republicans. If you look back, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, what was it? The whole thing about Trump being a Russian asset, like, and then Trump, and then we're all saying it's fake. Well, this is pretty bad for the Republican party. Um, because Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Tim pool are really big, uh, political pundits, uh, for the conservative party. And this is going to be pretty damning because now the liberals are all going, or the Democrats are all going to say, we were right. There are all kinds of Russian assets in your party. So now, like, the Republicans have no ground to stand on because it's just like you got caught, or some of you did, which means all of you are guilty, which is pretty crazy. I mean, both parties are guilty of so many things, but this is going to, this could be election. This could be, you know, the, the narrative now is going to be Republicans are Russian assets. And how can you fight that when a lot of your top political pundits, you know, and then you look at 
the thing is, is, uh, you know, my, my point to the Rogan sphere is like, you had Tim pool on a lot. You had Dave Rubin, even though that was weird, but you have a lot of these guys on, this is just the, this is just the beginning because then you have to look at, well, who's being paid, uh, with Israel money, the U S isn't going to want to bring up Israel because that's their ally. But you know, if it's happening with Russia, of course it's happening with Israel as well. And it's happening with Ukraine, like this propaganda and what's going to happen is these guys are going to claim that they didn't know who the money was from because there's going to be some like, uh, front facing thing. Um, that's going to look like, like some front facing like website or person. I think that's what they're about to get into. That is going to, um, be like a buffer between the war money and Tim pool and these guys. And he's going to be like, well, we want to support the effort, uh, in Russia or socially conscious, I don't know, some bullshit. And they're, that's what they're going to tell themselves. This is where the money's coming from, but they're going to be given terms that are going to be really suspicious. And when uh, asking further, you'll find out what really the deal is. Anybody that's smart. So Tim Pool and all these guys are going to complain ignorance. And uh, this is going to get put under the wash, but it's going to destroy the election. The Democrats... This might be the thing they needed to win. Or who uh, kind of summarizes a lot of what um, the indictment says. So basically, this in, one of these two Intel agents um, was a part of internal conversations with Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan. Uh, and they determined in this part of the indictment how much they were going to pay Benny Johnson and Tim Poole. Can we can we click on the the this piece? Um Okay. We should add that Lauren Chen was uh, is is in there as founder one. Her husband is in there as founder two. They were getting paid. They were getting paid. They they later get paid something like twenty five thousand dollars per month. But before the <laughs> media companies even launched, they're getting paid uh, eight thousand dollars per month just to find right wing influencers to convince them to join Tenet. So they're they're already getting paid at this point before and the, the media has companies even launched. Chen works for uh, for the Blaze, for Glenn Beck's company too. So and uh, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> Turning Point USA. So these tentacles are everywhere. This is kind of insanely wild. Um, the idea that you know uh, foreign interference in our country is like, of course it happens. Look at um, all the stuff that America does around the world, right? You know look at we're, we're probably the most guilty of it but the problem is is this is just the tip of the iceberg for conservative media and the thing is is like liberal media don't you don't you go praising your victory because you're you got dirty money too the whole media i know this for a fact that there's dirty money throughout the whole media and this is really this could be the start of a really bad situation for the American people. And it's pretty, it's pretty sad because what, what's going to happen now is it's, it's not all Republicans and it's not all Democrats. It's those running these organizations. It's those running the media. It's these top influencers, uh, these YouTube people, and they get bought out. And we all, they get bought, they all get bought out by somebody. Very few people say no. Uh, and trust me, it is very hard to say no to these things. But you also have to think about that these people, their fans, they, they have like compromised all of these people because they have sold them lies. And now these lies, uh, are being shown where they originated from and these people who thought they were fighting that very thing are now a part of it unwillingly which is crazy uh, let's just watch a little bit more here before we go to tim pool so coalition who's not getting a taste i guess the daily wire i guess so right <laughs> Right. I think that's true. Kalishnikov uh, was one of the two participated in, in U.S. Company One. This is Tenet, right? Messaging group co comprised solely of Kalishnikov, Founder One, Founder Two. That's Chen and her husband. 
uh, and an individual purporting to act as a representative of a U.S. company once investor, Edward Gregorian, who was, in fact, a fake persona, as described below, in There's that messaging, messaging group. Kalishnikov, your middle man. Uh, monitor discussions of, among other things, tenets, funding, hiring, and contract negotiations with commentator one and commentator two, who, as Binder has just identified, are Tim Poole and Dave Rubin. So Flipped. Um, flipped. Rubin is one, Poole is two, because it uh, matters when you yeah. get to how much they were being paid and yes. what their deal was. Yes. Which is fascinating because, as you say, um, so Chen was recruit- recruited here to, uh, or, or Chen was tasked by these, you know, Russian uh people just just a little quick like no you know like um what i find really cool about this little like live breaking news thing on youtube um i've worked in this industry and it's really cool because for these these are young hungry journalists right these people have gotten like this huge story and you can see it they're just like so excited and chomping on the bit to give you all that information and whether you not you believe in their uh whatever they're standing i don't i don't really know i don't watch this show but whether or not you believe in it i think a cool part of it is they're actually out there chomping on the bit to give you like the truth yeah it's probably laced in i told you so because they're on the opposite side but they're hungry and they're and they're trying to put journalism out there which is what we don't have in these these big companies anymore so i got to like congratulate them on that cuz it's pretty cool to see because that was the reason i got into it but you quickly find out that that's not the reason the industry is run on it's a sad fact and, and not it does this- appear it does appear that Chen knows what's going on. They they might have duped her with some of the fake uh, uh, aliases, but it does appear that uh, Chen and her husband are aware that this is foreign money based on where it's coming from. Is that time zone related uh, issue, Binder? Am I understanding that correctly? How that's uh, what, the they, circumstantial they, evidence they, toward that. Well, well, they're getting paid from overseas companies. Um, they're submitting their invoice through a Discord channel. Um, <laughs> there, there are very funny time zone issues, like uh, Edward Gregorian supposed to be in Paris, yet he shows up in the Zoom in a Zoom meeting he was supposed to have with either Ruben or Poole an hour early, uh, and that's because <laughs> it was. And that's because, like, say he was supposed to meet at nine a.m. And it was like 8 a.m. in Paris, but he's in the room. But that's because it's 9 a.m. in Moscow. So he got yeah. his. Oh. And, then, and then he explained it by saying, oh, sorry, my calendar was out of sync from my travels or something like that. Of course. Of they course. keep track of stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, daylight savings is different in Europe, too. Also, the details behind the Edward Gregorian thing, when I went through it, I was cracking up. It is by far the the most undercovered and most hilarious aspect of this whole thing. So this Edward Gregorian fake name, completely made up guy, there were, they, he does not exist. There is no, like if you Google searched him, nothing comes up. And Ruben and Poole questioned that. Like they were really, they, they were sort of at first sort of iffy about joining because they wanted to know more about Edward Gregorian. Uh, See, that's what I told you. The he's the front man, the man that's probably like n- he's not saying we want you to turn the tide on this, you know, conflict. He is saying, "Yo, let's do this for social justice or or to promote this, you know, something like happy." And see, you, you can't you you cannot say tim pool and these guys didn't know because that's the first thing you do right is you look into someone like if you get job you look at their portfolio right and of course you look to see if this guy and they didn't find him and they questioned it of course they knew what happened is they heard the amount of money they were gonna get and they were like who oh yeah we this dude's legit dog you know what i mean and that's how it is money breaks man and they did calls with uh, who this a person purporting to be him. I told you the time zone thing, but one of the funniest things is Ruben, dem- like he he's insisting on finding out more about Edward Gregorian. He says he can't go forward until he learns more about Edward Gregorian. They knew what was up. So they make this like fake, like profile, like magazine glossy page type thing, and it's in. It's actually in. If you scroll down in the indictment, it's there, and it has a little biography. 
in the Ed, uh, yeah. There's a little Edward Gregorian biography, and the biography is Should hilarious. Be in this thread. But, there, but there's a funny thing. It's on page 13. Um, so I'll read along with it because it's really funny what Dave Rubin says. Uh, just get to page 13 of that indictment. And so I'll, I'll read the summary while you pull it up. So the summary of his profile is Edward Gregorian, experienced finance professional and investor, deeply mm. engaged in business and philanthropy, and philanthropy, leveraging skills and resources to drive positive impact, supporting a range of organizations worldwide with a dynamic presence mainly in Brussels and London, Ooh, engaging ball. in personal and professional pursuits in each location with a focus focus on poverty alleviation, champion free speech, and advocating for social justice causes. Now, here's the really funny thing. So that profile should be suspect to anyone because it's so vague, right? It's completely bullshit. But they almost lost Dave Rubin because Dave Rubin tells Lauren Chen after receiving this that he has a problem with his, the, the, the Edward Gregorian profile, specifically the reference to social justice. <laughs> so, hey, he's got principles. But, so yeah. Russia like, was trying to like, put together a profile of this guy and put together what seems to be like some bullshit that you see on LinkedIn, throwing in like various, you know, how LinkedIn sort of summaries of these people yeah. are, like cares deeply about social justice and... And they put throw that stuff in there without realizing there there are keywords in there that would tell a conservative that something is off. <laughs> See, they all knew. They all knew. They knew. Come on, it's the money. <laughs> and so, but he agreed partner, to it anyway. I mean, but like he agreed they, to they, it anyway. Yeah. They, they 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 basically they had their issues with it. But let's just get back to the the this part here about uh, Chen. Um, we're trying to recruit Benny Johnson and Tim Pool. Uh, what's funny is that uh, Tim Pool. Well, maybe this isn't the one here. Okay, Tim Pool spoke to a Russian agent pretending to be a Hungarian businessman on a secure call. That's part of it. But if you could scroll down to the differences and the discrepancies in who got paid what. Um, oh, that's what this ha this was up. Okay. Um, the Russians asked Chen to recruit Benny Johnson and Tim Pool to make some content and offer $2 million a year each. Johnson said he wanted $5 million. Pool demanded 100 k per episode. Um, and apparently that's what Benny Johnson ended up getting, $400,000 a month for four monthly videos. No, that's, no, that's, that's Ruben and, um, that's Ruben and Pool. Ruben and there you go folks money talks money talks that that's about all you need to know right there uh money talks now let's let's go right here to tim pool himself the tim cast irl doj indicts russians for funding u.s company tenant media alleged with anthony constina this is wild dude this is 23 hours ago so this must be before the uh well no I don't know. This is wild. This guy, let's see if he goes radio silent. I'm out at Timcast News on the internet. Let's get started. Here we go. From the post-millennial DOJ indicts. Hold on. Watch how he, he is so fucking nervous. And watch how he just talks around. And then, uh, I didn't watch much. But here's, here's what he's going to do. He's going to say something. You know, he's this, this kind of you know youtube character is usually always blame and drag him in the mud no matter what kind of allegation uh it's 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 true until proven innocent right and watch i bet he's gonna say some innocent till proven guilty shit on this and if he does say that you know he's fucking guilty like the charges none of the charges have been verified we don't know who they are so we can't jump to conclusions yet some shit like that watch man watch i just watched this first part uh probably like two minutes in and i was like no i'm saving this for y'all this is good two rt media affiliated russians accuses them of laundering 10 million dollars to conservative company tenant media to sow division in u.s the doj alleged that the two concocted a scheme to create and distribute content to u.s audiences with hidden russian government messaging well well let me just take the the word of the doj straight from the doj website i'll issue some clarification i have a statement on this which uh, i will read for you uh, in a second when I first learned of this story, literally, I'm skateboarding. 
uh, and I get a DM from a journalist asking if I would talk about the Russian allegations or whatever. And I was like, what? I was like, what allegations? And then they sent me a tweet and I'm like, I ain't reading. Like, I ain't reading that. Like, I'm sorry this happened to you or whatever. And then uh, he said something. I'm like, dude, I have literally no idea what you're talking about. And so then uh, I get some calls after a conversation with a few people. I was like, all right, I'll put out a statement. And I thought it was a leaked indictment. I didn't realize the DOJ actually did a press conference on all this stuff. So then when I, I just I just corrected and, and changed it. And so uh, let me let me read this for you. And then we'll give the context as to what this means for us and for you. Uh, I will stress that this literally has nothing to do with Timcast Media in any way. I want to make sure that's very, very clear. The Culture War podcast is a separate company that produces The Culture War, and it licensed a show to Tenet, and that was it. Uh, there's no uh, uh, direct connection between this and, and Timcast. So just to, just to clarify, if any of y'all missed that, the company that is being charged by the DOJ for paying people uh, to spread whatever misinformation, uh, not misinformation, but their agenda you know, who knows what misinformation is, man. There's so much crazy shit being said out there. That company that the DOJ is charging, or, you know, whatever it's doing with them, Tim Poole licensed the show to them. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of one of those situations, you know, like, uh, wait, there's a Wuhan virus lab in wuhan and it's the monkeys you know what i mean i'm not trying to get political but you know like if you if it's there it's there right it's just crazy he's like oh you had nothing to do with us but the other company that my show that i own uh they licensed but it's not tim pool but the other bro it's you dog because you know where them checks go check it out but before we get into more tim pool i was in a conflict thing uh, in, in my early like photojournalism career, like before it was like a career, like I was just trying to go somewhere to get better and to learn how to do these things. I ended up and it got, it got violent. Um, and it was during the daytime and we were running for cover and like we got shot at, uh, and when I ran around the corner, Tim pool was there. This was back in his vice days. And he was like, dude, a bullet just hit me on the, uh, just hit below the feet or somewhere. I don't even remember, but he was talking about it. And I remember Tim pool back there. He wasn't a conservative. He was working for vice. He was going out doing real journalism. I used to like think Tim pool was cool. I was like, yeah, maybe I could do that. Right. You know, and that led to me like pursuing things. Right. And I just remember that. And then all of a sudden, like over the last couple of years, he just went straight to the right, like straight to the right. And I never understood that because I remember him from, from over 10 years ago, you know, you know, we were, there was like a little like incident that broke out. Bullets were getting fired. It was already a fucking crazy ass place to begin with conflict. Things got set on fire. People fucking dude it was crazy and did i just you, you, dude all if you're checking all the boxes dude like look at his compound uh, he got a hundred thousand dollars an episode dog dude he's got a compound look at all this nice shit he's got like rare pokemon cards that are like thousands of dollars for one card He's got a whole studio. How many thousands of dollars did that cost? Bro, you making a hundred thousand dollars, you can afford that. And look how quick it changed. It changed overnight. It changed overnight with Tim Pool. It changed overnight. Because remember, he was the dude that that built up his channel, right? So he could be in a podcasting van. That was his big thing. And then all of a sudden he has a media empire. It's wild. It's wild. Uh, so they say two RT employees indicted for covertly funding and directing U.S. company that published thousands of videos and furtherance of Russian interests. They say an indictment charging Russian nationals, Konstantin Kalishnikov, 31, also known as Kostya, and Elena Afanasieva, 27, also known as Lena, with conspiracy to violate the Foreign Agents Registration Act and conspiracy to commit money laundering was unsealed today in the Southern District of New York. 
They're both at large. I don't know. Were these people in America? The Justice Department has charged two employees of RT, a Russian state controlled media outlet, in a $10 million scheme to create and distribute content to U.S. audiences with hidden Russian government messaging, said Merrick Garland. The Justice Department will not tolerate attempts by an authoritarian regime to exploit our country's free exchange of ideas in order to covertly further its own propaganda efforts. And our investigation into this matter remains ongoing. Our approach to combating foreign malign influence is actor driven, exposing the hidden hand of adversaries pulling strings of influence from behind the curtain, said Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco. As alleged in today's indictment, Russian state broadcaster RT and its employees, including the charged defendants, co-opted online commentators by funneling them nearly $10 million uh, to pro pro-Russia propaganda and disinformation. So it goes all the way back to RT, which, it, you know, is the Russian state uh broadcaster right so it goes all the way so these are the guys that set up the front that got these guys it's just crazy dude you know what's going on when you're in that you know what's going on across social media to u.s audiences the department will not tolerate foreign efforts to illegally manipulate american public opinion by sowing discord and division covert attempts to sow division and trick americans into unwittingly consuming foreign propaganda represents an attacks on our democracy said christopher ray today's actions show that as long as foreign adversaries like russia keep engaging in hostile influence campaigns they are going to keep running into the fbi we will continue to do everything we can to expose the hidden okay let's fast forward i don't want to listen to him read this uh online content e channels including tiktok instagram x turn okay, us company go. one published english language videos on multiple social media channels including tiktok instagram x and youtube since publicly launching in or about november 2023 they posted nearly 2,000 videos and have garnered more than 16 million views on youtube alone many of the videos posted by us company one contain commentary and events and issues in the us such as immigration inflation and other topics related to domestic and foreign policy while the views expressed in those videos are not uniform most are directed to the pub uh, publicly stated goals of the government of russia and rt to amplify domestic divisions in the united states i mean that's a strong opinion but i can't speak for the people at the uh, the other commentators so I, I don't know i can only speak for what we produce on the on the, on the culture war which is available on iTunes and Spotify. In order to carry out RT's secret influence campaign, they say these individuals uh, posed as outside editors at the company and monitored the funding and hiring. They introduced uh, uh, Afana Sieva as a member of the ported editing team using fake personas, Helena Schruda and Victoria Pesti. They blah, blah, blah. They say, for one example, in March 22nd, 2024, terror attack on a music venue in Moscow, Af uh, Afana Sieva asked one of U.S. companies' founders to blame Ukraine and the U.S. for the attack, writing, I think we could focus on the Ukraine-U.S. angle. The mainstream media spread fake news that ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack, yet ISIS itself never made such statements. All terrorists are now detained while they were heading to the border uh, with Ukraine. Didn't we say that was ISIS? We covered that. We said it was ISIS, yeah. Yeah, we covered that story. We said it was ISIS. And they're, they're arguing that Tenet was saying it was Ukraine or something? This is what, the terrorist attack in, on October 7th? I'm pretty sure we called it ISIS, and we were like, oh, wow. I thought we talked about the, the spread of uh, Islamic extremism in Europe, but... Yeah. Which also... Bro, none of these people... They, this is... What are you doing, man? What are you doing? You Is this your stream? You streamed because you didn't want to look guilty, so you streamed even though you look guilty? Like, this is crazy, man. You know what, dude? We've made mistakes, homie. We have made mistakes in life. And, like, I'm not going to sit there and, like, ride you to the rails. Like, I don't care. But you are about to... F <laughs> you are about to face hell and fury from the Democrats and the media and basically everybody when they find out for real that it was you, you... Hey, I'll say sorry if it ain't you, but bro, it's you. It is definitely like I'm not even I don't even really care. I mean, I do care, but like I know that people are all bought out in the media. That's what they do. If you have any kind of voice, they either try to shut you down or buy you out. That's how it goes. I've played this game before. I know how it goes. These guys, look at her. I thought we were like, no, I thought we were like, you, you just went to that specific moment and you knew the answer. Of course, you know that specific moment because you were instructed to speak on it like that. That's why you remember. I thought you, nah, you know exactly what you do. Y'all got paid. Y'all didn't get 27 fucking skateboards around the room for no reason because that fucking room is massive. It's a full studio. Of course you knew what was up. 
Jeez, Lord. Let's just watch a little bit more. I'm interested now. Oh, is like <laughs> anyway. Uh, so they go on to mention that nine point seven million dollars was um was sent. Uh, the mm -hmm. the document names a few people, but they do this thing where they don't name the person. But if you're fans of The Simpsons, then you'll remember that episode where they said uh, uh, it's, it's Principal Skinner and he's like, a certain person has complained. We'll call her Lisa S. Mm, no, that's 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 not good enough. We'll say L. Simpson. Yeah. And so everybody knew it was her. So when they go in this document and they basically say, like, here's a person, here's how many subscribers they have, and here's the show they produce, but we're not saying their name, you get what they're doing and why. So I got a statement for you guys. Uh, I said, my statement regarding the DOJ indictment. Should these allegations prove true, I, as well as other personalities and commentators, were deceived, deceived in our victims. I cannot speak for anyone else in the company as to what they do or what they are instructed. The Culture War podcast was licensed by Tenant Media. It existed well before any license agreement with Tenant. It will continue to exist after any such agreement expires. The only change with the agreement was that the location of the live broadcast moved to Tenant's YouTube channel. I and the Culture War never produced content, any content for Tenant Media. And I, I want to clarify that, too, because we got, I got community noted on this thing. Uh... We didn't take orders, instruction, or editorial guidance in any way. The only thing that we had was we produced the Culture War Friday mornings at 10 a.m. You can go to youtube.com slash TimCast. That's where it is. But the, the, the core broadcast of the show moved from that channel to Tenet as part of a licensing agreement. So, like, if, uh, I don't know, say CBS or some major, major network said, hey, we want to put TimCast IRL also on our channel at the same time slot, I'd be like, sure, whatever, pay us a fee. I wouldn't know what they were doing. I wouldn't know what commercials they were running. I don't know what they're saying. And so that's basically what we did. Let me tell you a couple things. Let, let me tell you what he did. First off, this motherfucker's on Adderall. Look at his eyes. Look at the red around his eyes. Look at how fast he's talking. Look at right there. Can you see that? He's grinding his teeth in between his words. I'm just saying. Everybody in the media industry is on Adderall. I'm telling you. I am telling you. And they have no shame. And like... You would ask me 20 years ago. I just don't think it's good. You know, it's not good. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy thing, man. Second, he's explaining way too much. He's trying to make comparisons. He's trying to distract. That's the first thing the media does. That's the first thing any crappy corporation does. That's what they do. They distract, they distract. That's what they do. So he's trying to do that. And one, never trust somebody that puts out a statement like that. You know what a statement is? A statement is a distraction. And you're trying to say every, every, everybody that gets in a situation like this, I always say, you ain't got to say nothing. If the truth is on your side, the truth will prevail. Uh, and in rare cases, it does. I mean, the world's corrupt. What are we talking about? But I don't worry. If I have the truth, I don't worry about it. It's when I'm guilty that I start making up stories and putting out a statement that quick. Listen, I don't know where you come from, but like, let's just let's just go ahead and you know, you, you use the use the code, use the code. Just don't say nothing. Nothing you say is going to help help you. It's only going to make things worse. People already are taking sides. You just got to let the let the situation play out. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times, like, if something like this happened, yeah, and I didn't do it, it's just like, what the fuck you say? Dude, this is crazy. I ain't going to say nothing. You know what I mean? Snitches get stitches. <laughs> All right, sorry. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Let's just a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want to take up a, a more of your time, but this is wild, man. This is wild. Uh, now considering this, and I don't know what is true or not. So he's always messing with his nose. He's probably snorting it too, man. Why you, dude, when, when you're on Adderall, you have so much confidence that, that you go on camera to millions of people in, in, in a fucking crisis, you get high and go on television where you did a shady deal and you have the doj coming after you which means you're going to go to federal prison if this turns out and you and, and what you did and what the people you did you probably shifted this election uh unfairly what you did is going to tarnish the right and, and, and the thing is, is like both sides tarnish themselves, but it's not the people that vote. It's our politicians. It's our media. It's those people that make a fool out of themselves. But it's us, us people that go to jobs every day. They got bills. The, the, the people that their fucking laws really affect. 
It's us people that have to feel the fucking backlash of the games of the rich. And it's sad because now what is supposed to feel like a democratic parse, you done swung so many people. I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but my general consensus is you done swung so many people away from you. And, and Trump is going to take the backlash. Some of you think that's deserved, but I believe in fair elections. I say let the candidates battle it out. You can hate them. That's that's what that's what picking sides. You you hate the Cowboys and the Raiders. You hate the Broncos. You know you hate the Golden State Warriors. It's not that hard to hate your enemy, right? Your opposite team that you're not in love with, right? This is bad. This is so bad, and this is going to swing the election. I think what is likely going to happen is that the show is just going to revert back to the same exact show that it always was, and it's going to be on youtube.com slash TimCast as we do. That's the only thing I can really say. I don't know. Uh, let me read more. Bro, you better lawyer the fuck up because you are about to get slizammed. Dude, you're like, you think you're going to be putting up shows? Get out of here, dog. You're about to have the DOJ all up in that booty. Or Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control of the show and its, uh, and its contents of the show are often apolitical. Examples include discussion, uh, discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. In fact, we had one episode called, Is Donald Trump the Antichrist? Or is it Elon Musk? Which is literally when we brought on these dudes who think Donald Trump is the Antichrist. I don't know. Drew Tang was one of them, I think. Was that around for that? There's one thing. I say the show is produced in its entirety by our local team without input from anyone external to the company. The Culture War is a separate company not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. It exists solely for the production of the Culture War podcast. That being said, we still don't know, do not know what is true. These are only allegations. Putin is a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. And to the journalists who wish to jump the gun, create their own narrative, or lie about what is currently going on, you can eat my Irish ass. And I will stress. That's what he said, dude. That's what Adderall makes you right. He's just so confident in his bullshit. Like, I don't want to pick sides. Like, I'm not political. But this guy stinks. It stinks. And if it's not him, which it's his company, it stinks. You got to have some knowledge. And you can't say that or eat my Irish ass in a statement. Dude, the, D the fucking American government is coming after you for the one thing the one thing that is such a hot topic all over the world right now is the conflict over there. I'm trying not to say it as much because YouTube keeps limiting me. It sucks. Okay? I can't say the U word and the R word. But that conflict is a hot topic, is like the major hot topic in America. And you pick that one thing that is the major hot topic and you work with those people. That is what Adderall will do. Adderall will make you think that's okay. And like we can look morally, you know, a thousand years ago, see which government was right or wrong, which one was doing all the bad stuff. It's not going to be favorable for either one of them because they're both doing a lot of bad stuff. Right? It's wild, man. It's just wild to see all these journalists all yacked out. All yacked out. And they're coming on this show. Just look at that face. Just, just like such arrogance. Bro, you, you have the government coming after you. And you committed one of the ultimate no-nos. One of the ultimate no-nos. And you know what? If I'm wrong, it's cool, man. I could say, you know, nobody listened to me anyways. If I'm wrong... All of this is alleged, by the way. All of what I'm saying is alleged, my beliefs, everything. If I'm wrong, I'll say sorry. But this guy's stinky. His company's already involved with the company that the tenant, which is part of RT, you know what I mean? They're are you know, they're already involved, dog. Your company's already working. You got contracts. You got legal paperwork with them. This is wild. But this is a little something different. You know, this relates to the Rogan spear. How does Rogan respond? Rogan's chummy. All these guys hang out, right? It's kind of crazy. I think the pieces are starting to fall in place, and we are just starting to see the levels of corruption in all of this media, and specifically the levels of the corruption in the Rogan sphere. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe. And uh, if you want to hang out more and talk, go to Reddit. There's the, the Reddit for this YouTube is called the 250. 
Yes, beta males, come on over. We'll accept you. We don't believe in all that horse shit. Uh, we're all people, and we're all just trying to stumble through life. So keep on stumbling, and have a great day.